Hi, I'm Alison Karasek. I'm Jeppe Ugovic. And we're two independent curators who have been collaborating on the research and exhibition project that is Witch Hunt for, I would say, about three years. Yeah. So the exhibition really comes out of an interest to activate and think through a history of gendered and indigenous persecution in Scandinavia that we feel hasn't been properly recognized and think about this history as a lens for other histories of persecution and social violence that exist in the present day and have existed as far back as 1450 when this all started. Here we have an inclusion of maps by the Sami activist artist Keviseli, Hans Rockner Metzisen. He started using and appropriating um, commercial tourist maps and started erasing the borders and started adding um, Sami um, place names and basically started drafting this kind of Sami geography that many of us in Scandinavia have very little awareness of. By Cavaselli's gesture of kind of taking back the map and erasing the borders that contributed to this history. There's a kind of reclamation and a celebration of a history that was very much attempted at being erased as far back as the witchcraft trials. This is one of our largest new commissions by the Danish artist Rasmus Mjup. Rasmus and us talked a lot about the ways that folklore and the witch still figures in contemporary Danish society. And one of the only ways that she really does that is through um, St. Hens, the midsummer tradition of dressing a witch in, in, in out of natural material and in clothing and then burning her on the fire. That sort of have gathered in this space um, as a kind of like Sabbath um, to, to celebrate, to have fun. So you see a space of conviviality and um, togetherness. And I think this was very important for us in thinking about the witch hunt and the witch mythology of Bloxbia and these um, places where witches go after they're burned to kind of congregate and be together as also spaces of agency and possibility that perhaps, um, yeah, this is where, this is where the new kind of social queer forms are, are taking place. Um, we embarked on this research collaborating and talking to historians, visiting archives, and we learned so many new perspectives. And I think as we were really talking to these historians, we really realized how many themes of that time are present and relevant again today. We're really interested in how to evoke kind of memories of a lot of different forms of colonial history, colonial violence, gendered violence, and the artists in this show really create a through line um, by way of their own research and their own interests and how they kind of cross-pollinate one another. My name is Virginia Lee Montgomery. I'm one of the artists in Witch Hunt and I have these two artworks on display. This one, Headstone to is a stone on memory foam sculpture that is meant to evoke the tactility of time. In this artwork, Water Witching is a seven minute surreal film that really is about the conjuring of internal resources during periods of political adversity. So there is both imagery of ecologic devastation via tornadoes and storms, alongside imagery of melting ice caps, narwhals, and protest that was taken on site at the Women's March in Washington on January 21st, 2017. So the film kind of weaves together these different symbologies to produce kind of an affect of action and movement and healing via the honey. So this is a work by the artist Marit and Sarah, and it's a work composed of lassos, which are used in Sami reindeer 
communities, uh, and they're a very useful and personal tool. And so Marit has here evoked the Norwegian flag, um, bringing up the kind of injustices of the Norwegian government and the fact that they have really tried to pause on this very historical long tradition of reindeer herding and how policy has really affected reindeer herders and specifically Marit's brother who is a who is a reindeer herder himself. And so it's a very personal work because she's actually collected these from the people in this region that have used them. Here we have it installed throughout the gallery where they become denser as you move through the space. A lot of the works within the show that are thinking about memory and monumentality are kind of countering traditions and conventions around the way that history is written. So they're not necessarily giving us an answer, they're not necessarily telling us exactly how to think or how to move into the future, how to experience the present, but they're really kind of pushing us to grapple with our own subjectivity in relation to not just the past, but the present.